Hello everyone. Let's do a piano pandemic activities look at the prelude from Sweet Bergamasque by Claude Debussy. Uh, I love this piece and have played it many times over the years. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those favorites that lots of people play. And uh, I would I would say deceptively simple. It's not so hard on the page, but to get the sound just right is maybe maybe not so easy. Uh, so we'll go through maybe in a few videos and look at some details about the sound and then uh, have a, a play all the way through with a scrolling score at the end. So what do we have? We, we have this lovely piece that has always reminded me of going outside in springtime for a walk in nature. It seems to wander from one idea to another. Uh, it's not um, doesn't feel driven particularly to, toward uh, toward a goal. It doesn't feel you know. It doesn't have a sense of Beethoven urgency or anything like that. It just it feels like it takes each beautiful thing as it comes, and I love that quality. The opening reminds me of of uh, you know you, you open the door after being shut inside for a while and you get the sunshine in your face and the breeze and the fresh smell of spring and it, it just uh, it's a wonderful sensation you know wow okay so um that that's a cool opening now because it's debussy what people tend to do is they tend to play it really gooey with the rhythm and i know it says tempo rubato and of course the few recordings we do have of Debussy's own playing, notably Claire de Lune, is a very flexible tempo. Yes, that's true. That's true. On the other hand, it is important to keep in mind that Debussy was extremely precise about rhythm and was thinking about rhythm all the time. I remember when I was attending a kind of week-long workshop thing at Eastman School of Music, we went over to the library where... Um, a staff member showed us some of their treasures, one of which was uh, an original manuscript of Debussy. I believe it was La Mer, the um, orchestral tone poem. And I, I, I sort of guess I had in my mind the idea that his manuscripts would be all sort of gooey and vague and wispy and so on. Not at all. It was like a wiring diagram. It was precise. Tiny little note heads. Everything's very straight. It's very precise. And I thought, I misjudged this guy. Um, then a friend of mine told me about his research into the golden section, the, the mathematical counting of beats and um, placing important events at certain mathematically significant moments. And he shows that Debussy did this in very many pieces, whether in this one or not, I don't know. But it, it just is the other side of the equation that this composer was very interested in rhythm. So what I tend to do here is... When in doubt, I play in tempo. And where I like to go is start by taking a survey of wherever he says don't play in tempo. In other words, all the retards or rollentanos or whatever. Find all of those. Where do they start? How long do they last? When are they canceled out with a tempo or some other term? And, and just create a survey. How much of this thing is really in tempo? And then just play it in tempo and find out what you get. You know, if you really count it, see what it does. See if that actually makes sense musically. And I find that most of the time, we want to stay most of the way in tempo, which is nice nuances. So anyway, what I would not do probably is, is play this all... just get there whenever. I think I would play this in tempo. So I just think it sounds great. Mostly in tempo with nuances. Now, what about uh, clarity and pedal? Again, Yes, Debussy loves the pedal and making this beautiful resonant sound, but he also does things that are very polyphonic and clear. So one of the things that I'll do 
I'll just take the score very literally and play what it says and see what I get. So in this second measure, third measure here, the left hand has and that A, that whole note A holds over uh, and then it, we get this okay so I get that great major 7 sound B flat major 7. Well I think that's a great little sound and, and um, with the uh, G on top, it now becomes a major 13 chord. Well, if I don't pay attention to that, I get something like this. Where I don't hear any of those harmonies. So I want to hear all of those harmonies. You hear the suspension? love that one, where the bass and the soprano sustain and the middle voices move down, all right? This piece is just filled with treasures like this, if you pay attention, if you are meticulous, if you read things like ties and note values, you, you'll get a lot of beautiful treasures. So actually there are parts of this where I treat it almost like Bach. Rather than rather than just kind of hammering through it. So mostly in rhythm, thing number one, attention to the details of what is sounding and what is not sounding. Um, long notes that sustain versus short, no short notes that, that do not sustain. Another one would be here, the second time we get this theme. And now, now here, granted, I might hold the pedal through there and just gradually shake it out because we have all of this. Gradually get rid of it. And now notice this. This is another one of these beautiful things where we have... where those whole notes should sound all the way through. And we get that gorgeous sound. Not. Okay, that's a student thing to do. Oh boy. If you don't hang on to that and love to hear that, boy, you sound like a student. <laughs> okay. So, meticulous attention to all of that. And even here. Not. that but all of them clear all of them clear okay um, so clarity 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 all the way through now let me show you um, when we get up to this a tempo on the second page uh, I pedal through that because that all seems harmonically to go together. And then this little guy. The way I do that, I, I, I want to get that really fast and clear. Yum, dum, dum, da. It's, it's like a little, um, I don't know, a little bird flits away or a little frog goes or something like that. Um, so I don't want to be slowed down and have the, those 30-second notes sound clumsy. I don't want that to happen. So what I do here... Um, that's possible, but if you take the F in the left hand, you roll that... And then you come over. You can get this really clean sound. Okay, so the, the alto is being taken by the left hand. So you get this. Then we do it again. 
Okay, so you can get very interesting sonorities if you think through this kind of stuff and um, really, really demand everything be, be super, super clear. Okay, that's the first couple pages.